بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. This is the fourth episode of a series on why sincere questions, sincere answers. And today's question is why does God create people then send them to the hellfire? SubhanAllah, it seems like these questions that the new atheists put, our, put in our minds, they know no end. Um, and uh, if we just, uh, you know, these questions, we have to keep in mind where they're coming from. Uh, I've explained in previous episodes that, um, that they're coming from, they're not coming from the spirit of slavehood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not coming from the spirit of sincerity. But uh, that doesn't mean that when these questions come into our minds that they're not sincere questions because when questions like these are repeated in the media and we hear about them and then somebody else says them and somebody else says them and people they based on these questions they raise objections you know they may they might even you know subhan you know now the billah they might leave islam because of uh, questions such as this and we don't know how to answer them then they become questions in our own minds. So what we need to do is, when, these, when we hear these questions, what we need to do is, we need to be sincere ourselves and pose these questions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking them to someone who, uh, who, is, uh, who, has, uh, who, who is able to teach you how the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have answered these questions and in fact, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself answers all of these questions in the Qur'an. And we go with a spirit of sincerity, with a spirit of humility, with a spirit of seeking help, not with a spirit of objection, not with a spirit of, uh, of putting the blame on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which actually is the common theme that you'll find runs through many of these questions. So, uh, so, we, so when these questions, when we pose these questions, we're posing them sincerely, but we need to, because these questions are not, they don't actually come from us. These aren't questions that are intrinsic to our fitrah, to our nature. They're not, they wouldn't come in a healthy Islamic society. We need to understand where they're coming from. We need to understand what motivates them before we answer them ourselves. So this question, if we just think about it for a moment, what, what is this question saying? This question is saying that God creates people and then God sends people to the hellfire. What an outrageous question. What an outrageous statement. You know, if, uh, if you know, subhanAllah, nobody in the, this question, it's, it wouldn't come to the mind of any, any Muslim who lives in a uh, conservative Islamic society where people love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they worship him, they have good relationships with their scholars and the righteous people and with their parents. Like this is the last, last thing that, 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 that would come to people's minds because it's absolutely absurd. It's an absolutely absurd question. So, um, and you know, what, what they do, uh, the way that they ask this question, they'll say that God, he creates us, he sends us the hellfire, and on top of that, he tells us to worship him as well. <laughs> you know, la hawla illa billah. What an absurd question, what an absurd statement, what a terrible question to ask. Um, but, uh, but now, uh, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask it, because remember, we're asking it sincerely. But initially, the way that it's posed, um, when our healthy, if we, if we understood what, what's, what's really being said and, um, and what's really going on, then our natural reaction would be the one that I've just described. What an absurd question, what a terrible question to ask. But we don't understand why that's the, that's the natural reaction. So I'm going to explain to you now why that should be your natural reaction to this question. Let's change this question and imagine that we're in a university. So we're in a university and we're really depressed. And we say, why does the university ad administration put us through school and then fail us? What a terrible university administration. They're so evil. And you know, to add insults to injury, they charge us lots of dollars too. <laughs> they pocket our money and they put us to school and they fail us. What a terrible university. They're so evil. They're so bad. They're just out to fail me. Well, if you 
and, and now if I if I you know it's a very analogous statement, um, and so um, I will, and immediately there's certain things that's gonna, that are going to come to your mind when I when I put this question in this way. But one of the things that's going to come to your mind is that wait a minute, the university doesn't fail everybody; it fails some people, but it most people or a large number of people it actually passes, and so it passes people and it also fails people. And wait a minute, it doesn't just fail people just like that. It prepares them for an exam, tells them that an exam is coming, tells them how to study for their exam, leaves them to study, and then if they don't study, they fail. If they fail, it's not the university's fault. If they fail, it's their own fault. Somebody who's asking this question, why does the university administration, administration put us through the misery of going to school and pocketing our money as well and then fail us. This is normally the person who, who's going to be asking this question is not someone who is going to be a very good student. And uh, and and, uh, and he probably deserves to fail. So uh, if you if we go back to our question here, why does God create people and then send them to the hellfire? So look look at our if we look at the model, it says God creates people and then sends them to the hellfire. Well, that's not really what's happening because God created people. He sends some people to the hellfire, but he also sends people to paradise. And there's things that happen in between. He doesn't just create them and send them to paradise or hellfire for no reason. He creates them. He sends them messengers. Uh, and these messengers, they tell them about the hellfire. They tell them about paradise. They warn them that if you continue this way, then you will end up going to the hellfire. They try to save them from going to the hellfire. They exhort them. They push, they try to, they try to turn them away from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people, they rebuff them. They insult them. They try to kill them. They still persist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them messengers who are of perfect character. They are perfect role models. They inspire people. They're, they're, they're of good, they have good ethical conduct. And, and then after that, uh, people, they die and they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects them and he judges them on the choices that they made in their lives. And then if they chose to live a life in, uh, uh, that, that takes them to the hellfire, knowing that they're going to go to the hellfire, then he sends them to the hellfire. But if they chose to live a life that will take them to paradise, then he sends them to paradise. So um, this is a, um, you know, it's a, it, it tells us that the question, why does God create people and then send them to the hellfire? There's many things that are actually wrong with this question. So when, when somebody asks a question, um, we should be careful before we answer the question, because there are many, there's many logical fallacies related to asking questions. Many questions, they're asked and they set people up for a particular trap. And this question is like that. It sets you up for a particular trap because it misleads you. So what you do is, you, what you say, you say is, that's the wrong question. Why is it the wrong question? It's the wrong question because, because God sends people to the hellfire. He also sends people to paradise. And he doesn't just create them and send them to hellfire or paradise, but he sends them messengers and he judges them. And so that's a wrong question. And so the first thing you do before you answer the question is you rephrase the question and you put in all the details and you say why the, the real question is, why does God create people, send them messengers, judge them, and then send them either to paradise or to the hellfire? This is a good question. We can, we can work with this question now. Um, and so, now, so now, now that we've clarified what the question should be, uh, uh, we still need to clarify one more thing. And this, this we learned in our previous episode, and that is the meaning of why. And remember, in the previous episode, we asked the question, why does God want us to worship him? And we saw that why can have one of two meanings. When we ask a why question to human beings, then it has the meaning of the question is, what Mo what moved a human being to do something? Human beings are moved by motives. And the motives of human beings are benefits that return to themselves. So why 
did I take medicine because I needed to cure myself? Why did I wear a coat because I needed to warm myself? Why did I attend a class because I needed to learn how to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A why question, when it's posed to a human being, it's asking about the motive that drove them to fulfill a particular need. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anything. And the benefits of his actions don't return to him, but they return to us. So this why question, when we ask about Allah with, with, with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not, it's not asking about motives. It's asking about wisdom. So what we're asking is, what is the wisdom behind all of this? In other words, what benefit is there to us in God doing all of these things? The question is, what is the wisdom behind God creating people, sending them messengers, judging them, and then sending them either to paradise or to the hellfire? This is now a clear question. This is now a clear question. We can now answer this question. What is the wisdom? Well, the wisdom is so that they can choose through their own free will to go to paradise. Let's say that again. What is the wisdom behind God creating people, sending them messengers, judging them, and then sending them either to paradise or to the hellfire so that they can choose through their own free will to go to paradise? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created people with a free will. He sent them messengers to warn them of the consequences of bad choices, so to, to inspire them, to motivate them, to exhort them to make good choices. And, and, and the goal is for them to make the choice to go to paradise, not to make the choice to go to the hellfire. Um, and that's why and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he commanded us to worship him. And we saw this in our previous episode. The benefit of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns to us. It doesn't return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he commanded us to worship him so that we might benefit in this life and we might benefit in, for eternity in the next life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he commanded us to do things that are obligatory, he's actually saying that you have to go to paradise. When he commanded us to avoid things that are unlawful, what is he saying? He's saying, I forbid you from going to the hellfire. The purpose of our creation is for us to go to paradise, but there's free will. There's free will, there's choice, and that's the complicating factor. And, and so if we, but the goal is, is for us to go to paradise. The purpose of our existence is for us to go to paradise. And there's many verses of the Quran that state this. Let's take some verses at the beginning of Surah Yunus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says at the beginning of Surah Yunus, he says, Inna rabbakumullahu alladhi khalaqa samawati wal abba fi sittati ayyamin thumma stawa ala al-arsh. Verily, your Lord is God. Your Lord is Allah. Inna rabbakumullah. Who is Allah? He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days and is firmly established on the throne of authority. As an aside, um, the reason why, one of the, one of the wisdoms behind uh, saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth in six days and then uh, assumed the, the throne um, is, is, to, is, to, is to point out the mistake and the, uh, and the uh, corruption of the uh, books of the Jews and Christians. Because what do they say? They say that God, he created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he rested on the seventh. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we learn لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم he doesn't, uh, he doesn't get tired, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't fatigue, uh, creation is effortless. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created the heavens and the earth in six days, then he didn't rest. What did he do? He assumed control. He ran everything directly. That's what it means for him to be established on the throne of authority. It means that he assumed power, he assumed control, he ran everything and he runs everything in the universe directly. Everything that happens in the universe is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's direct command, direct uh, will to create things and then they are. It says, kun bi 
فَيَكُونْ And it is. So coming back to the verse, it says, Verily, your Lord is the one who created the heavens and the earth and then ran the universe directly. ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرِ Regulating and governing all things. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي مَا مِنْ شَفِيعٍ مَا مِنْ شَفِيعٍ إِلَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ إِذْنِهِ no intercessor complete with him except after his leave has been up obtained. That is your Lord, that is Allah your Lord. Therefore, serve him. Serve him, i.e., worship him. The word in Arabic is worship him. The next verse is the verse that we want to focus on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, that after he created everything uh, and he created us in this universe, we will return to him. He says, <inaudible> To him will be your return, all of you. We will all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When will we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after we die and we are resurrected. We will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he will judge us for what we did in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إِلَيْهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّا To him will be your return, all of you, and that is the promise of God in truth. And surely, he says, إِنَّهُ يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ Verily, he begins the process of creation. He created us the first time, and then he repeats it. He resurrects us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he creates us and then he resurrects us. Why? What's the wisdom? This is what I want you to focus on. He says, he is the one who, who created us the, for the first time and then resurrected us. Why? This is the, the, he's telling us the wisdom. He's saying that the wisdom behind creating us and resurrecting us is to reward those who believe and do good deeds with justice. Not, and in fact, the reward will not just be with justice, but it will be many times over, far more than we deserve, and infinitely greater, uh, you know, greater uh, you know, uh, number of times than we deserve. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the key thing here is he created the heavens and the earth and he, and he made resurrection in order to reward those who believe and do good deeds. That's the wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he created us so that we might choose through our own free will to go to paradise. So when we make the choice to go to paradise, we are fulfilling the wisdom for which we are created. And when we choose, uh, when someone chooses to turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to turn away from going to paradise, they are going against the wisdom for which they are be, have been created. They are going against the purpose for which they have been created. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he continues and he says, but those who reject him shall have drafts of boiling fluids and a penalty grievous because they did reject him. In other words, they chose to do that. So the wording of the verse is important. And the Mufassirun, they point this out. They explain that the reward is mentioned as the purpose of creation. It is he who begins the process of creation and then repeats it. Why? So that he might reward those who believe and do good works. Full stop. End. And those, and then separate, separate topic, and those who reject him shall have drafts of boiling water and a penalty grievous because they did reject him. He says, So uh, so in other words, because they chose to reject him. So the wisdom, what is the wisdom? Go back to our question. What is the wisdom behind God creating people, sending them messengers, judging them, and then sending them either to paradise or to the hellfire? 
so for them to choose to, through their own free will to go to paradise. That's the wisdom. God created us to send us to paradise, not to send us to the hellfire. And but he gave us a choice. He didn't just create us and send us somewhere, as the question seems to imply. He gave us a choice. And then he placed our fate in our hands through the choices that we make. And he made us responsible to make good choices. He said, you have to choose well, but he gave us a choice. So um, there's a, uh, this is, there's some other verses that I wanted to focus on. These verses are in Surat uh, Al-Mulk, uh, which is um, an important surah, uh, frequently recited. Um, and uh, Surat Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he mentions on the first page of Surat Al-Mulk, he says, وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمُ He says, for those who reject their Lord is the penalty of hell. وَلِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرُ And evil is their destination. Terrible is their destination. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes some of the terrors of the hellfire. The hellfire is a terrible place. It's reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created hellfire and it is a terrible place. And he's told us that it's a terrible place. Why is he telling us that it's a terrible place? Is he telling us that it's a terrible place because he wants to throw us into it? Or is he telling us it's a terrible place so that we avoid going to it? No, he's telling us it's a terrible place to stop us from going into it. Every single verse in the Quran that describes the, 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 the terrors of the hellfire, the purpose behind every single one of those verses is for us to realize this reality and take heed and not go there. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the hellfire in the Quran, he is, he is doing it for our benefit. He is doing it so that we don't go there. He's not doing it because he's condemning us to go there. He doesn't, the, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he warns us. Messengers are sent to warn. They are not sent to condemn. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, he's warning us. He says, وَلِلَّذِينَ كَثَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمْ For those who reject their Lord is the penalty of hell. وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And what a terrible destination it is. إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا that when they are thrown into it, when they are cast into it, they will hear its breath and they will, and while it is, it is blazing forth. The hellfire is something that is angry. The hellfire is described in the Quran as something that is alive. Almost bursting with fury. This is why I've cited these verses. It says every time, every time a group is cast into the hellfire, thrown into the hellfire, its keepers, will ask angels that are terrible and terrifying angels that are the keepers of the hellfire, they will ask, Alam yatikum nadir? Didn't a warner come to you? Why are you going in here? Didn't somebody tell you that if you did these things, you'd end up here? Didn't anybody warn you? What will they say? They will say, Qalu bala. They will say, yes, indeed. Qad ja'ana nadirun. A warner did come to us. Human beings are only responsible when they are warned. That is why someone who is not reached by a message of a prophet is not responsible, will not go to the hellfire. Human beings are only responsible when they are warned. And so it says here that yes, indeed, a warner did come to us. He warned us of this. But what did we do? They will say, فَكَذَّبْنَا وَقُلْنَا مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ but we, but we rejected him and said, God never sent down any message. إِنْ أَنْتُمْ, إن أنتم 
man in antum illa fi dalal kabir you are just you are in a, in a huge delusion you are misguided and so they they called their messengers liars despite the fact that they came to them with miracles and clear signs to show them that they were genuine messengers from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then they will say they will go on and they say waqalu they'll regret the people of the hellfire they will regret waqalu law kunna nasma'u aw na'qilu ma kunna fi ashab as-sa'ir they will say had we but listened or used our intelligence we would not be among the companions of the blazing fire so uh, what are they doing they're confessing every single person who enters the hellfire will confess that it's his fault that it's her fault that they entered the hellfire and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fa'tarafu bi dhanbihim they will confess their sins but that is not the time for forgiveness for people who have made the choice to go to the hellfire who will have forgiveness allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says innal ladina yakhshawna rabbahum bil ghaybi lahum mawsiratun wa ajrun kareem as for those who fear their lord without seeing him for them is a forgiveness and a great reward and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of these people who fear their lord unseen who strive for paradise who strive to turn away from the hellfire especially in this blessed month when the gates of of paradise are opened and the gates of the hellfire are closed and the devils are chained and the hearts are soft and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of his worship for us and we pray pray salat at-taraweeh and we fast during the day and we give our zakat and we give charity and we hold our tongues um this is the month of forgiveness and this is the month where we turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so let's go back and look at our question this terrible terrible question and that we should get out of our minds why does god create people and then send them to the hellfire we saw that this is a misleading question because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just create people and put them into the hellfire no he creates people he makes them responsible he gives them a choice he sends them messengers he warns them and then he judges he he lets them make their choices and he takes them to account uh, after res- after resurrection and those who chose to the hellfire to go to the hellfire they go to the hellfire and those who chose to go to paradise he sends them to paradise this is a misleading question and the the biggest problem with this misleading question is that it puts the blame in the wrong place and this is a common theme in many of the questions that we have seen and that we will see this question should not be asked in this way this question should be asked in another way it should be asked in a way that puts blame in the right place where is where where should the blame for someone who goes to the hellfire lie it lies with themselves just as we saw in these verses uh, from surah al-mulk and so the question that we should ask is if god created people and sent them messengers to warn them about the hell to a hellfire then why do they still choose to go to the hellfire that's the question not the question that that we that we started off with صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم Does anybody have any questions